A special thank you to each of our subscribers who make this channel possible. Here's today's story. In a shocking revelation that has sent ripples through the corridors of power, Sue Gray, the chief of staff to labor leader Sir Keir Starmer, has reportedly received a salary increase that places her earnings at £170,000 a year, surpassing that of Prime Minister Rishi Sunak by £3,000. This news has ignited a fierce debate within government circles, as it has emerged that Gray's salary is higher than that of any cabinet minister and even her conservative predecessor, Liam Booth Smith. Sources close to the situation have suggested that Gray was advised to consider a pay cut to avoid the backlash associated with earning more than the Prime Minister. However, she reportedly declined this suggestion, leading to further scrutiny of her role and influence within the Labour government. A government insider expressed frustration, stating, it was suggested that she might want to go for a few thousand pounds less than the Prime Minister to avoid this very story. She declined. In response to the growing controversy, a government source close to Ms. Gray categorically denied claims that she had any involvement in the decision regarding her pay, asserting that the matter was handled by officials. This denial, however, has done little to quell the unrest within government ranks, where some insiders are openly questioning the dynamics at play in Downing Street. The timing of this salary increase is particularly noteworthy as it comes just months after Labour's electoral victory and amidst ongoing discussions about the pay and conditions of special advisors. The Prime Minister's salary stands at £166,786, which makes Gray's compensation all the more contentious. An anonymous government source described her pay as the highest ever special advisor salary in the history of special advisors, underscoring the perceived excessiveness of the increase. Gray's role as Chief of Staff is multifaceted, encompassing responsibilities such as controlling access to the Prime Minister and ensuring the effective implementation of government policies. Critics argue that her significant salary increase reflects a broader dysfunction within the current administration, with one insider remarking, it speaks to the dysfunctional way no tin is being run. No political judgment. An increasingly grand Sue who considers herself to be the Deputy Prime Minister, hence the salary and no other voice for the Prime Minister to hear as everything gets run through Sue. While some government figures have come to Gray's defense, arguing that she has played an instrumental role in preparing labor for government, others express deep-seated frustrations over perceived inequities in pay among special advisors. Many advisors expected pay increases upon entering government, only to discover that they would be earning less than they did while working for the Labour Party in opposition. This has led to a sense of disillusionment among some advisors, who feel undervalued and overlooked. One particularly vocal advisor lamented, I'm working harder than ever in a more important job, and they want to pay me less than the Labour Party was paying me when it was broke. This sentiment reflects a growing concern that the current administration may not be adequately compensating those who are crucial to its success. The controversy surrounding Gray's salary has also raised questions about the decision-making processes within government. Critics have pointed to the slow pace of ministerial appointments and the handling of special advisor contracts as evidence of a lack of preparedness. For example, the appointment of a minister for the Middle East was delayed until July 18, two weeks after the general election, raising eyebrows among those who expected a more streamlined transition. Moreover, the Conservatives have seized upon this controversy to challenge Labour's credibility, demanding answers regarding the process behind Gray's salary increase. They have posed 10 questions to the Labour Party, including whether the Prime Minister personally signed off on the increase and whether Gray played a role in determining her own pay. In the wake of these revelations, Labour's leadership has been forced to defend both Gray and the broader approach to governance. Health Secretary West Streeting stated, We're very lucky to have Sue emphasizing the importance of Gray's contributions to the party's success. However, this defense has done little to assuage the concerns of those within the party who feel that the current pay structure is inequitable. As the fallout from this controversy continues, it is clear that the issue of special advisor pay and the dynamics within Downing Street will remain hot topics in the political discourse. The Labour Party is now faced with the challenge of addressing these internal grievances while also maintaining a united front as they navigate the complexities of governance. In conclusion, Sue Gray's salary increase has sparked a significant debate within the Labour government, highlighting issues of equity, transparency, and the overall effectiveness of the administration.
As the situation unfolds, it remains to be seen how labor will respond to these challenges and whether they can effectively manage the internal tensions that have emerged in the wake of this controversy. That's all for this story. We upload videos every day covering many different subjects, so hit that subscribe button to stay informed. Thanks for watching.